Rabbits are animals associated closely with the holiday of Easter due to their association with spring and fertility, something which isn't too surprising given that they are indeed very prolific breeders. They are widespread animals because of this, with human introductions to other parts of Europe, South America and Australasia further showcasing their ability to adapt to new environments, and in most cases, they do exceptionally well. This also tracks back into the ancient past as well, where relatives of today's rabbits colonised nearby European islands, and ended up becoming quite different to what we today are used to in the process. These animals belong to the genus of Neurolagus rex, the name meaning the Menorcan king of the rabbits, which lived on the island of Menorca, part of the Balearic Islands off of the coast of Spain during the Pliocene epoch. The remains dates from around 5 through 3 million years ago, with the material being found in assorted bits and pieces in fissure filled deposits from the northeast of the island, which are geological formations that involve cracks and or fissures in the ground being filled in with sediments and materials over time, with the ones entombing the remains of the Neurolagus holotype being filled in by tough red limestone. These remains were found by independent researcher Josep Quintana when he was just 19 in the early 1990s with him initially thinking them to belong to the extinct Menorcan tortoise due to their size. It wasn't until 2011 that the remains were described after a grinding and tedious four-year-long process of treating the matrix that encased the remains with hundreds of litres worth of acetic acid, but upon the last of it being applied, the team of scientists that were working on the preparation, Mikey Kola and Salvador Moya Sola, with Josep also in attendance too as the lead author, were stunned at what was found within. They yielded hundreds of bones, with almost all of the postcranial elements being present, along with a good amount of their cranium, which was enough for them to classify them as a type of rabbit, but one both far larger and more unusual than anything alive today. Their body was very robust, with them having a short and also stiff spinal column that had low capacity for movement, indicating that they were rather inflexible animals. This has implications for their ability to hop, like their smaller relatives, as, due to this low flexibility, it means that they wouldn't have been able to spring their body around like how living rabbits do, and therefore are very unlikely to have hopped at all, something also supported by their short feet with splayed toes, a condition not all that conducive for being able to launch and land as effectively. Instead of being able to hop, it's instead thought by the researchers who describe them that their robust arms, along with their paws, were instead better adapted to dig up roots and to excavate other miscellaneous underground foods, being able to reach things most animals couldn't. Their bodies and legs weren't the only thing that differentiated them from living rabbits, as their heads were also quite a bit different proportionally. For one, it's very small relative to their body size, with their orbit suggesting that they also had small eyes, their size being similar to those of European rabbits, which is surprising given that these animals are one-tenth of their size. When their bone histology was examined, it was found that the males and females were dimorphic in their size, with the females being larger than the males, and their growth lines indicating that their large body sizes were accumulated over the course of gradual increments, something which is quite different than living rabbits, where they instead rapidly develop as they become ready to leave their warrens. It was estimated also that they'd reached sexual maturity at around 3.6 years and 6.2 years of age for female and male neurologus, respectively which is quite high, and tracks along with other island-dwelling animals, something which ties into their lower metabolic rates, which will be explained further. They also had short, wide, and low snouts, as well as shrunken tympanic bullae, the hollow bony structure that encloses parts of their inner and middle ear, which indicates that they had rather reduced hearing, which alongside their eyesight, means they likely didn't have the same long ears as living rabbits iconically do. They also had a flat brain case, indicating their brains were also reduced in size too, something which has been seen in other island-dwelling animals, like the goat Myotragus, which will be talked about in more detail soon, alongside the deer Candia cervus, which I have also done a video on, which had reduced brain sizes of around 44 through 50%, and 13 through 22% respectively, when compared to their mainland relatives. This altogether indicates that there was a decrease in the need for locomotory and neurological activities, and therefore also in metabolic expenditure, which given their environments, makes sense as I'll discuss. Their island of Menorca isn't also today lacking in large predators, and is also limited in resources given the small size of the island, being only 701 kilometers squared in size, and given this and the lack of predation, it meant that, in their smaller ancestors, they both no longer needed to outrun or outhide other animals nearly as much, 
which coupled with a more limited food supply meant individuals which had slower metabolisms and therefore energy expenditure were more likely to be selected for and do well. It's because of this that these animals got to such large sizes, being up to half a meter tall and an estimated 12 kilograms in weight, which is so large it means that they weigh over 10 times the weight of the average European rabbit, which weigh around 1 kilogram and also double the body mass of the largest domestic rabbit, the Flemish giant, which weighs 7 kilograms. Getting on to something else, regarding the skeletal reconstruction of one in the paper where they were described, it's generally very good and really showcases just how huge they are to living rabbits. But as a bit of a correction, there is one rather glaring issue when it comes to the skeleton that has been noted. Work done regarding animal neck posture by paleontologists Darren Naish, Mike Taylor and Matthew Weddell found that regarding the neutral pose of many amniotes done in the context of understanding more about sauropods' default neck position, was that the living animals assessed do not maintain their necks in a habitual neutral position, but instead is usually quite extended to the point where the cervical region is vertical. A live rabbit x-rayed for the study shows just this, and is not at all like the horizontal positioning seen in this neurologus reconstruction, with said positioning it coming from the increased flexibility that soft tissue provides their skeletal structure, which is information you can't fully gather from fossil bones, no matter how articulated they are. The reconstruction was likely done this way due to how they imagined how living rabbits hold their heads, which does make intuitive sense when you look at how often their necks are postured. So it's not some egregious error or anything, but it is good to point out so as we can improve such reconstructions in the future. Getting back to things, how these large rabbits came about on the island is also quite the fascinating story, as the Mediterranean was quite a different region during the late Miocene through the early Pliocene during which they lived. They likely entered the region of what is now Menorca during the Mycenaean salinity crisis around 5.9 through 5.3 million years ago, which was an event where the Mediterranean Sea went into a cycle of partial and or nearly complete drying up, which we know occurred due to the sediment samples being recovered from the sea floor, which includes soils, varying minerals, and even fossil plants. The Straits had its last closure from the Atlantic around 5.6 million years ago, with the region's dry climates leaving the whole Mediterranean basin dry in just a thousand years, and leaving behind vast swaths of land 3 to 5 kilometers below sea level, with hypersaline lake pockets remaining similar to today's Dead Sea. Later, around 5.5 million years ago, wetter climatic conditions of the time resulted in the basin receiving more fresh water, and eventually, around 200,000 years later, the Strait of Gibraltar reopened again with the Atlantic filling up the Mediterranean basin in an abrupt manner during a period known as the Zanclean Flood, which has been estimated to have taken between several months through to two years to finish, which is practically nothing in geologic time. This massive rise in water levels during this time isolated Neurologus' ancestors on Menorca, likely being descended from animals similar to or potentially of the genus Alepus, a small rabbit taxon that inhabited the region before Neurologus diverged. Neurologus, of course, wasn't the only animal living on Menorca during the Pliocene, as they also shared their environment with a good few other species. These include the giant tortoise, of which the bones of Neurologus were initially thought to belong to, Solitudo gymnesica, along with worm and wall lizards, geckos and painted frogs, making up the rest of the herpetofauna. The only other mammals known from the islands during this time was the giant dormouse species, Muscardinus cyclopius, along with the horseshoe bats, Rhinolophus gravensis, so there was little when it came to competition for these rabbits, which allowed them to obtain the sizes we see here due to the lack of any other large herbivores. For the rest of the Pliocene and through to the beginning of the Pleistocene, Neurologus continued to do well on the island. That was until a series of climatic shifts and new arrivals changed the ecological balance of their home forever. As sea levels fell due to the glacial cycles occurring during the time, Menorca became periodically connected to the nearby island of Majorca, with an interchange of fauna taking place as a result. One of these animals was a small goat, Myotragus, the mouse goat, an appropriately named dwarf ungulates possessing unique features that many of their group lack, including binocular vision and a slow maturation rate. It seems likely that with their arrival and subsequent resource competition, alongside changing climatic conditions of the time, led to the replacement of Neurologus with this new fauna, unfortunately putting an end to these massive rabbits. Today, there are still some examples of larger than usual rabbits, one of which are the Amami rabbits of the Amami Oshima and Tokunoshima Islands, 
which also speed chases across Asia around the same time Neurologus evolves, with their lineage eventually dying out on mainland Asia and becoming isolated on these two islands. Fascinatingly, while not as large as Neurologus, weighing about 2.5 kilograms compared to their estimated 12, they do show many similarities to the extinct giant rabbits, with them being rather stealth, having splayed toes, and also having small ears. This latter trait, which is something that makes depicting Neurologus with equally small ones more of a reasoned thing to do. While they are currently endangered due to habitat clearance, range fragmentation, and predation by introduced predators like mongooses and cats, it isn't unfeasible to think that perhaps sometime in the not too distant future, evolutionarily speaking, these chunky rabbits could well become comparable in size to Neurologus, with their island habitats, as we well know, being brilliant environmental microcosms that favour quite radical and transformational evolutionary trajectories considering the conditions animals are put under. Neurologus were very impressive animals as discussed, and as has been mentioned by Quintana, the one who discovered their remains in the first place, is justifiably a big ambassador for these amazing rabbits, and considers them to be a good candidate for the island's mascot animals. And, in his own words, quote, I would like to see NREX used to lure students and visitors to Menorca, end quote. And well, Mr Quintana, it's certainly working, I can tell you that much. In conclusion, they show how oftentimes, when an animal group adapts to their environment by growing bigger, their anatomy also has to change to accommodate their larger size and what their environment requires, which is why you just don't simply see many very similar looking small and large representative animals all that often, particularly in mammals given their denser bones, which restricts their growth, which is quite different than what was the case with dinosaurs, where their airfield bones means many could easily weigh more than elephants while still being able to function well. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.